Hello. Crude here. New series? Possibly. Maybe. Most definitely. What was? A gaming series. Because this show doesn't have enough of those already. With this series, I want to focus on all sorts of famous and both infamous gaming moments throughout history. From E3 conferences, to gaming reveals, to gaming releases, to console reveals, whatever the case may be. So long as it's memorable in some form, it counts. And what we're going to do with this series is look at how a certain gaming event was perceived back when it first happened, to how it's been perceived throughout time, to how we look back at it now throughout modern day. Hence the title, What Was. And with this first episode, we're going to be focusing on a very infamous event that permanently tainted the reputation of a certain console brand. You probably all know exactly what I'm talking about. The Xbox One reveal. Oh boy. Let's get into it. Now in order to properly kick this video off, we need to go back to early 2013 when Sony had announced the console that absolutely no one saw coming, by the way. PlayStation Orbis. Or for anyone who isn't a dumbass, the PlayStation 4. At this fairly low-key event, Sony had presented some brand new games that would be coming to this next generation system. Some of those being legit, while others were straight up false advertisements. But now with the PlayStation 4 being a thing that officially exists, it led to a lot of people thinking. What does Microsoft have in store? Seeing as the PlayStation 4 is going to be released in November of that year, since that's a very normal release date for modern day systems unless you're the Switch, it led people to thinking, when's the next Xbox going to release? Is it going to release in the same year that the PlayStation 4 is? Is it going to release in the year afterwards, similar to how the PlayStation 3 came out a year after the Xbox 360? What games does Microsoft have prepared for the system? What does this console look like? What's it going to be called? What competition is it going to bring for the PlayStation 4? Because we all know that the Wii U certainly isn't it. And so, about a month or so before the official reveal, the hype leading up to this announcement had officially begun. A lot of that stemming from Call of Duty Ghosts' very stupid looking teaser trailer. But I digress. And so after weeks of waiting to see what this brand new Microsoft Next Generation system is going to be, we finally got the reveal. And it was the most unexpected thing anyone had ever seen. And everything gamers had absolutely asked for. From sports, sports to TV, TV to a forced connect system that shoved down your throat. And to top it all off, Next Generation dogs, dogs and fish, fish that move out, move out of the out way, way when you get, get close, close to them. To them. And thus, once the conference had ended, it led to Microsoft's reputation going from this to this. After years of waiting to see what they would follow up with after the Xbox 360, we get the Xbox One. A console that we barely had any new games revealed for. Again, a Force Connect device that increased the price of the console to 500 instead of it being 400 like it should have not being able to normally trade games with friends, and being able to do it like once every 30 days or whatever shit they had planned. And a lot of things that Microsoft wanted to do back in the days of 2013, which while normal now, it was still too early for back during that time. And also presented a whole lot of other digital only features, which at the time was very scary when it came to gaming, is now becoming the norm. And did I mention the rumors about the NSA spying on us with the Kinect device? That was absolutely the best part of it. And so a few weeks later, in E3 2013, when Microsoft had finally realized that people liked games on their consoles, they decided, you know what? Let's present some games on our brand new upcoming system. And so they did. And it was pretty nice to see. But a lot of people look back on the E3 Xbox 2013 conference as the Xbox One reveal because of how close both events were. But they weren't, and the E3 2013 Xbox conference was nowhere near as bad as everyone thought. Because again, there was actual games there. And to top it all off, when the head of Xbox at the time, Don Dickhead Matrick, had been asked about all the digital-only decisions they had been making for the system, he responded with the classic, Fortunately, we have a product for people who aren't able to get some form of connectivity. It's called Xbox 360. And that made people even more shocked, for better or for worse. And thus, Sony came in and took several shots at them about all their anti-consumer practices. And thus, they won the generation just like that. From being a cheaper system, to being able to properly trade games with people. This is how you share your games on PS4. Thanks. And a plethora of other decisions that won everyone over, from Xbox to PlayStation. Even though the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 were pretty tied in sales back in 2013, but I digress. And so, all of the decisions that were made for the Xbox were eventually changed nearing release. One of the first few being that the Kinect was no longer required in order to use the Xbox. Oh, did I forget to mention that? They focused more on the games than TV and sports and whatnot. 
And while they were slowly improving nearing the release of this new system, the reputation of this console was still way down the drain, and it would take years for Xbox to redeem itself. To this day, it's still badly affected because of this Xbox One reveal event. And keep in mind again, it's been nearly six years. So you know it was bad when, almost at this point, a decade later, one conference is still negatively affecting a system. And eventually, Don Dickhead Matrick was booted from Xbox and replaced with Daddy Phil Spencer, who turned the Xbox One into the system it should have been from the start, making even more gamer-focused decisions instead of TV and sport ones, eventually phasing out things such as the Kinect with time, introducing features such as the Game Pass, as well as introducing backwards compatibility, which at first with previous consoles was very normal, was made into this big deal of a feature with the current generation of systems now, probably because the PS4 and Switch don't have it. They also, about three years later, released a refined version of the Xbox One, which the console should have been from the start. But even with the refined Xbox One being a thing, I still have the OG. Once referred to as an ugly VCR, now referred to as a thick boy. Regardless of some useless features on it, like this Kinect port right here. In fact, here's a good one for you. What does this Kinect port and a prostitute have in common? You try them out once and you never touch them again. They also, in mid-2017, decided to pull a PlayStation 4 Pro and release an Xbox One X. Again, what the console should have been from the start, but couldn't for obvious reasons. But even with all these more consumer-friendly changes being made, it still wasn't enough because of the games. Take Crackdown 3, for example. This was a game revealed nearly five years ago, at the beginning of the generation, now releasing nearing the end of the generation. That's how confident Xbox's game releases have been. But hey, it's not all bad. At least we've got games like Scalebound, right? Overall, there's only been like one game released since 2016 or 2017 as an exclusive. Or console exclusive, whatever stupid term they use. But it seems like, thankfully, they're changing that since going to the next generation, they have bought 500 brand new studios. Will they turn into another Rare? Guess we'll see. Even though Rare was already going down the shitter even before Microsoft bought them, but let's forget that and call Microsoft bad. And what's funny is how Microsoft in recent years has gone from being the bad guy with Sony being the good guy to the roles kind of being replaced, except Sony still has games to present. How will things turn out with the next generation? We'll just have to wait until 2020 because we all know that's when they're coming. Let's just be real here. But I'm sure that Microsoft will have plenty of games for the ninth generation system coming next year. In fact, I think that Halo Infinite is going to be a launch title for it. It just makes the most amount of sense in my opinion. All the comparisons to that game just leads to me thinking that this is going to be the first game since Halo 1 to be a launch title for an Xbox. And having what looks to be a classic Halo game as a launch title for the next generation Xbox, that right there is going to be a money maker, so long as it's marketed well. And that's not including all the other developers that are working on games, which unfortunately definitely aren't coming this generation. So in other words, all three of us that have bought an Xbox One, we've all wasted our money for nothing. But hey, Microsoft has obviously learned from their mistakes, so that's what matters. I mean, hopefully they have, but I'm sure they have. So overall, what was the Xbox One reveal? Well, it was perceived as a terrible system from the start, then over time started bettering its reputation, even though throughout the years it still wasn't perceived that well, but better than it used to be. And now in 2019, it looked at as a pretty decent system, even though it still lags when you try to barely move the analog stick on the main menu, which will most likely change again in another two weeks. But throughout the years, the system's definitely improved, and let's all hope that Microsoft has a brighter future going into the ninth generation. How will Sony compete? Guess we'll find out. So that's the first episode of What Was. Episode two coming whenever I make it. But with that being said, hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, subscribe, share on social media, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but I now have a Patreon, so if you want to support that, then go ahead. There's a link in the description, and I may leave it as a pinned comment as well. Just know it's entirely optional. You don't have to donate. It's just there in case you want to do it. But that's all I have to say, and I'll see you all next time. Until then, I'm out. Peace.